the self is being. It does not become other than what it is. And it is invariably so. Inherent in it is knowledge of itself. The knowledge is of the nature of pure or unalloyed consciousness. It is no mere perception or conception. It is absolutely non-dual. If there is ignorance prevailing regarding the nature of the self, then there is the assumption of individuality. One takes oneself to be an ego entity, an I. That I is the birthplace of all duality. From it, by it, within it, is imagined all the misidentification with the mind, with the body, and so forth and so on. The birthplace of duality is the notion I. That is, it is the starting point of all the imagined bondage. It is the point of commencement of illusion. The thing to ask yourself then is what is this I? If it is the birthplace of duality, has it itself been born? If it is the starting point of illusion, is it itself real? For if it proves to be illusory, an illusory beginning for illusion is completely non-existent. What do you consider I to be within yourself? In other words, inquire within yourself regarding your own nature. Who am I? If you would have liberation from all of the imagined bondage and therefore freedom from all suffering, you must know yourself as you are. Regard yourself as an individual entity of some kind and you will undergo experience that is limited, consequently suffering, and that bondage or limitation will correspond precisely to the definition of that I. So if the I is regarded as the body, one will experience or be bound up in a world that corresponds to that body. However, if you inquire to know yourself and realize that you are not the body, then you are unaffected by that world, you are not in that world, and you will even ask yourself, is there a world? Similar is it with the mind. If there is misidentification with the mind, you will regard states of mind and individual thoughts as existent. From what perspective do we say these things exist, these thoughts exist? It is all according to the definition of I. The definition of what you regard as yourself. If you inquire, who am I, D 
deeply, then you know yourself. You identify with, your, with what is really yourself. Only there are not really two of you, one who identifies with another. It is not that kind of union. Therefore, the Maharshi says to say, I have realized the self or I have not realized the self are both absurd. Why does he say so? Because the self is absolute being, not in relation to anything else. It is indivisible existence, which is unformed and for which there is no creation. The realization with non-objective knowledge that there has never been the bound individual is the destruction, as it is called, of all the bondage. The realization that there is no one to be deluded is the dissolution of all ignorance. What remains? That which has always been the case, undifferentiated being, unmodified forever consciousness. And bliss that is invariable. It is not that you get to see the self where the self occurs to you. Rather, you are the self and there is no other kind of you. Realizing this is Brahman knowing Brahman, God seeing God. So, for whom does realization belong? Or for whom does the state of non-realization belong? Go on inquiring into who you are and see exactly what pertains to you and what does not. Who you are, that is, what is the self and what is not. You'll find that what you are is ineffable and inconceivable, yet immediately and directly known with a knowledge that's the nature of pure consciousness, unmixed with anything else. Whatever you experience, you are there. However you practice spiritually, you are there. Who is this you? When you say of anything, gross or subtle, I know it. Who is this I? If you think, I experience it, who is the I? If just this much is realized, then as Sri Bhagavan has said in verse, the notion I see did not arise. How could the notion I did not see? If only you know yourself as you truly are, that to which you aspire is realized to be present perfectly full forever. If only you realize what in truth you are, the very root of ignorance and suffering and bondage, etc., is destroyed and never returns. If only you realize who you really are, 
the blissful immortality of which the Vedas speak, the immaculate Brahman, is realized as your very identity and as your continuous experience. If only you realize who you are, you will know with absolute certitude that there is no unrealized state.